Can we travel faster than light? Einstein's special theory of relativity governs our understanding of both the flow of time and the speed at which objects can move. In special relativity, the speed of light is the ultimate speed limit to the universe. Nothing can travel faster than it. Every single moving object in the universe is constrained by that fundamental limit. Speed of light and sound. This isn't something like the speed of sound. Early scientists wondered if we could ever go faster than that speed. Not because of some fundamental rule of the universe, but because we didn't know if our engineering and materials science capabilities could withstand the extreme turbulence generated by moving at such speeds. But everyday objects already surpass the speed of sound. For example, the crack of a whip is caused by the tip creating a sonic boom as it travels faster than the sound speed. The problem with trying to surpass the speed of light is that as you go faster, the more kinetic energy you have. But relativity tells us that energy is the same as mass, so the faster you go the more massive you become, and yes, this means that a moving baseball has more mass than one standing still, but that's a tiny effect. As you approach the speed of light, your mass balloons up to infinity. Exploring light speed. This isn't just a matter of clever engineering or figuring out some trick. This is built into the fabric of the universe. That said, there are proposals out there for designing specialized devices that could supposedly overcome this limit without outright breaking relativity. These concepts work because special relativity is a law of local physics. It tells you that you can never measure nearby motion going faster than light speed. For example, a wormhole could send you to a distant destination faster than you could go traveling normally through space, even though you could travel down the wormhole as slowly as you want. The Alcubierre drive is essentially a warp drive, deforming space to time near you so that it can pull you forward as fast as you want to go, even faster than light, without once even firing a rocket. Negative mass and backward time travel. But these fanciful ideas suffer from two drawbacks. For one, to function they each require the use of some exotic form of matter, namely matter that has negative mass. Negative mass is truly weird. If you were to drop a ball of negative mass, it would fly up. If you kick the ball, it would roll in the opposite direction and so on. It would completely break everything we know about movement and momentum. And we have absolutely no examples of negative mass existing in our universe. Without negative mass, you can't build a wormhole or a warp drive. Second, the ability to go faster than light automatically permits backward time travel. As soon as you concoct methods to cheat the speed of light, you can set up scenarios where signals or spaceships can return to their origin point before they depart. This sets up all sorts of messy causality violating situations and paradoxes, like dropping off a bomb to destroy your spaceship before it departs. But unless it departs, the bomb never gets delivered. Fruit of the Luminal an international team of physicists has cooked up a new theory that could allow for objects to travel faster than the speed of light. And while they say it wouldn't technically violate the laws of physics, it would lead to phenomena so mind-bending that it'd make the end of interstellar look normal. To wit, according to Science Alert's analysis of the team's new paper in the journal Classical and Quantum Gravity, travelers moving faster than the speed of light would experience multiple timelines at once. How, you might ask? Through a 1 plus 3 space-time framework, which flips the idea of three spatial dimensions and one time dimension in favor of three time dimensions and a single spatial dimension. The other three dimensions are time dimensions, said co-author Andrzej Dragon from the University of Warsaw in Poland in a statement about the work. From the point of view of such an observer, the particle ages independently in each of the three times. One plus three space-time. Does that make any sense from our puny human perspective? We're honestly not sure. But it is a mind-bending exploration of an exotic what-if, not to mention yet another example of researchers playing around with the decidedly Star Trek concept of faster-than-light travel. An added bonus, in theory, the scientists say, the framework might even help reconcile Einstein's theory of relativity with quantum mechanics, two sets of rules in physics that have yet to play nicely after many decades. This new definition preserves Einstein's postulate of the constancy of the speed of light in a vacuum even for superluminal observers, Dragon said in the statement. Therefore, our extended special relativity does not seem like a particularly extravagant idea. Look, it sounds very cool. But then again, so did Tenet, and we all saw how that one turned out. The textbook answer. This ultimate speed limit is a curious fact, and one that runs quite against our common intuition. After all, 
If you are zooming along in your car and step on the gas, you'll go faster. And why your car has a top speed? We know of faster things like fighter jets and bullets. However, speeding up eventually stops working. No matter how hard you try, you cannot go faster than tilled 186,000 miles per second, tilled 300,000 kilometers, slash tag. The most common explanation for this cosmic speed limit is that as an object goes faster and faster, its mass increases. And this explanation makes some sense. After all, it's harder to push a mountain than a pebble. If the mass of objects becomes infinite as they get closer to the speed of light, it makes sense that you cannot break that speed barrier. It would take infinite energy to accomplish. There's a lot of merit to this explanation, and it is often explained this way even in college physics classes. Heck, even I've taught that from time to time, but it's not the best answer. Everything travels at the speed of light. To understand the real reason why you cannot go faster than light requires that we learn a key idea from Einstein's theory. While our common experience tells us that space and time are different things, you realize that they are more similar than different. Instead of space and time, there is a single thing called spacitime. This idea is perhaps most easily understood by means of an analogy. Look at any world map. We can identify a location on the map as two numbers, latitude, the north slash south number, and longitude, the east slash west number. While there are some minor differences, for example, it gets hotter or colder as you move north slash south, there really is no difference between the two directions. In space-time, it's much the same. Individuals can move through time or space, just as travelers can decide to move east slash west versus north slash south. Now for the key insight. One of Einstein's professors, a mathematician by the name of Hermann Minkowski, looked at Einstein's theory of relativity and realized that at its deepest and most fundamental level, the theory said that any object was simply traveling through space-time, partially through space and partially through time. When Einstein's theory was pushed harder, what was revealed was that every object travels through space and time at a single speed, the speed of light. To understand this more easily, suppose you are at some location that is big and flat, like the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. Suppose further that you are in a car that has the accelerator locked so that it only can go at a single speed, 60 miles per hour, 100 kilometers slash Earth. Is faster than light travel possible? Since causality seems kind of important in our universe, with the past staying safely in the past and causes always preceding effects, violating that aspect of reality also seems like a no-go. The speed of light limit is baked into the most fundamental relationship in the universe. The relationship between space and time is expressed through special relativity. Every single time we test that theory, we are also testing every other aspect of the theory, including its limitations of light speed. And special relativity is perhaps one of the most well-tested theories in all of science. For over a century, it has stood strong. This isn't to say that someday in the far future, humanity couldn't concoct some new theory of physics that completely rewrites our understanding of speed, space, time, and causality, which makes it impossible to outright rule out faster than light travel. But for now, it seems like we, and everything else in the universe, are permanently stuck in the slow lane. So guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day and I will see you in the next video.